All right, what's going on guys? It's currently 12, 10 in the morning. And believe me when I tell you, this is the time I am most productive when it comes to writing code. I just got back from the gym and today was leg day. So if you know, you know, I am so exhausted, but there's a lot I have to do tonight. Oh, well, is it tonight or? this morning well whichever one but there is a lot i have to do tonight and um i thought it's gonna be nice for me to bring you guys along to do a code with me vlog where i you know show you guys what i'm doing kind of like explaining my thought process so yeah it's gonna be fun um just one second i have a nice lacroix for the road Alright, you know, just to kind of explain what I'm going to be working on today, um, I'm going to be working on my application called Scriblo. And if you're new here, you probably don't know what Scriblo is. So let me just give you guys a brief explanation of what Scriblo is. Alright, so this is what Scriblo is. So Scriblo is basically an article writing platform just like Medium. This is just a project I built sometime last year to update my portfolio basically. It's had a good amount of users. You can see we have um, other users, you know, writing articles on the platform. So I would say this project is actually very successful. So right now I'm currently having problems where users cannot sign in by putting in their email. The only option is to use the sign in with Google. So just to summarize what the problem was, whenever the user tries to log into the application with their email address, the backend is supposed to check if that email address exists. If it exists, it's going to send the user a verification token to their email inbox and they're supposed to put in that token on the client side. So whenever my client side sends a request to my backend to go ahead and send the user the authentication token, my backend doesn't send the token and my client freezes waiting for my backend to send a 200 response back to the client telling it that it actually sent the token. When my backend doesn't do that, so the client is frozen, the user has no idea what's going on, it doesn't show them any error, backend just keeps trying to send the email address and it's not sending. And so, fun story, four days ago I was trying to showcase this project to a friend at school and I was trying to log into my account on Scriblo and I found out that the authentication wasn't working. And that is kind of what led us to where we are right now, me trying to switch the code base from PHP to C sharp. So when I found out that the authentication wasn't working, I already knew that it was a problem with the backend because I've experienced this before. So I went straight into the PHP code and lo and behold, that's where the problem was. I tried to do everything in my power to fix it, but it wasn't working. So I, I made a radical decision to just switch the entire code base to csharp.net. And I know that's not a common route to go when you have this kind of problem. Most software developers will rather, you know, fix the current code base than switch in the code code base entirely or probably you know implement a different kind of framework and just to mention the PHP backend for the application was actually built with vanilla PHP no framework so that kind of contributed to the problems I've been having with the code base for a while and just want to say sorry if I'm talking too low it's actually 12 30 right now and I have people sleeping in the next room so I don't want to disturb anyone and I will say me using vanilla PHP actually contributed to 90% of the problems I'm having with this application right now and I know every other same developer will rather implement a, frame, a PHP framework like Laravel than switch code bases entirely. So why did I decide to, you know, switch code bases? Here's the thing. I'm currently learning c .net, So I believe there was no better time for me to actually, you know, master my c .net skills than right now that I'm having problems with my PHP backend. I could use this time to learn how to build a complete backend application using .NET c -sharp. So I decided to just, you know, make the switch. Is it the most efficient thing to do? Probably not but um, I'm taking this as a learning experience. If this was an actual job, there is no way I'm advising anyone to switch code bases, just to put that out there. Like this is not the best thing to do, but this is just something I have to do if I want to learn how to, you know, build a complete backend application using c .net. So that is why I'm doing this. And um, I actually do not know what I'm doing in c .net. Um, I've only taken one college class that taught c .net. So, um, yeah, we're gonna be learning this together as we go. I have my good old 
chat GPT over here to help me out if if I ever have any problems. So I feel like we're, we're good to go actually. One of the biggest challenges I might face is trying to build the backend to send the same response that my PHP backend sent to the client. So that way I don't need to change how the client side processes the response from the server. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> Just to explain it further, let's say my client receives the user's email address and the user's recommendation as an array from my PHP backend. I need to send it in that same format from the .NET backend so that way I don't have to go to the client to change how the client handles the response from the server. But it shouldn't be difficult if I reference my PHP code just to see how the response is being sent to the client. Alright so enough talking, our agenda for today is authentication. That is the thing I need to focus on because that is what is currently broken. As soon as I get the authentication working, I'm going to deploy that version on the v2 domain and update my client to use the .NET version of the back end. But yeah, let's get to work. So I just finished creating a diagram of how the login with email flow is supposed to work. I'm more of a visual person, so I need to actually see it to understand how it works. But this is how the login actually works. If the user selects to log in with email address, we send the email address to the server. The server checks if the email address exists. If it does not exist, we just go ahead and send back a response to the client to continue the sign up process. But if the email does exist in the database, the server is going to go ahead and send the user an authentication token to the client's email. If that email sending process was successful. Was the email sent successfully? If it was sent successfully, we send a 200 response back to the client. The client then updates the UI asking the user to enter in the authentication code the server sent to the user, right? But if that email sending process failed, we're supposed to send a 500 response back to the client telling the client there was an error that it should try again. But the problem is that the PHP backend fails here. So it doesn't successfully send that email address. And it's also supposed to send a 500 response back to the client, but it does not for some reason. So the client is here waiting for a response either 200 or 500, but my backend doesn't send any of them. In a situation where it actually fails to send email address, it's supposed to send the client a 500 response so that way the client updates the UI telling the user that there was an error, but the server does not do that. I've looked at the code several times to try to understand why the server wasn't sending the 500 response. I couldn't find a reason why it wasn't sending the response. It just freezes. So, so right now, our task for tonight is to develop this exact same logic by using csharp.net. So we're going to start by creating the endpoint that checks if the user's email exists. Then we're going to worry about actually sending the user the authentication token to their email inbox. So yeah, let's work on this first and see how it goes. Alright, so I think I got it to work. So you can see over here, um, I have an endpoint that checks if the user exists and is supposed to expect the email address. So here I'm using the entity core framework to check if there's any user with that email address that exists and that is being stored in a boolean. So I'm just checking if the user does not exist. I am sending a 404 response. Come on, focus. Yeah, I'm sending a, hold up. <laughs> All right, so I'm sending a 404 user not found 
on response the user exists we go ahead and send it we go ahead and send it 200 saying the user exists this, this is what the request is looking like um, if I hit send I should get user exist there we go so I get my status which is 200 then I get the message user exist to data is null token is null so the way it's supposed to work is instead of sending this response the backend is supposed to go ahead and send the user the token to the email address and if that email sending process was successful we're going to send a 200 response saying the token was sent and we're going to send the token along in the client i don't know if i'm going to send the token i don't think it's secure to send the token but instead of saying user exists we're going to send a 200 telling the client that the token was sent to the user's email address we're making huge progress guys like I'm so happy this worked. I don't know why, but I'm just so happy it worked. What we're going to be tackling next is the email sending process. I found something called Amazon SES, which is an email, simple email, Amazon's simple email service. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and read the documentation and figure out how to set up the Amazon SES with this .NET application. I have not done this before. This is gonna be a first time, but um, I'm just gonna go look at the documentation, watch a couple of videos and figure this out. And by the time I'm back, I should have I should have something working. I'm confident I should have something working. Yeah, let's go. Amazon has the worst documentation ever. Like the examples are not even practical. I don't know, I may be the one that is dumb. Okay, I figured it out. I actually figured it out, guys. This is so exciting. Man, this actually took so long. This is way easier than it was in PHP. This is actually an asynchronous um, request. Then we use the email services from Amazon SES dot send email a sync send the email the subject and the body and that is all if i go ahead and hit send we go ahead and get the request saying token sent and look over here that is the email i can't believe how easy this was to do using amazon ses man so right now all i have to do is store that authentication token that was generated in the database alongside the user's email address so that way once we send a 200 response back to the client telling the client that we, uh, we send we send the token to the user's email address when the user puts in the token they got in the email address into the client the client is going to send that token back to the server to verify that the token is correct. We're going to check if the token the user sent from the client matches the token that was stored in the database when the token was generated. I've learned so much about csharp.net under an hour of me, you know, just, you know, searching the internet about how to do stuff in .NET and there's no better way to learn than getting your hands dirty, like for real. So right now, all I have to do is code out the verification logic for the authentication token, but that's something we're going to leave for a different video. I think I've made a huge amount of progress right now. The time is currently after two o'clock and we started about 12 20 ish so we we've been here for we've been here for a while so um i'm actually gonna go to bed i have a 9 a.m class tomorrow so i actually need 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 to go to bed hopefully in the next vlog i will be coding out the verification logic for the auth token let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of videos i actually enjoyed you know making this one it's very nice to you know kind of like tell you guys my you know thought process you know it actually feels good you know talking about your thought process it helps you think better so i actually enjoyed making this so let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of videos and i will actually do them i would say if you haven't signed up for scriblog go ahead and sign up you can still sign up using your google account using the continue with google button so go ahead and sign up so you guys are going to be the first ones to you know try out the updates thanks for you know sticking around let me know if you guys like this kind of videos if you guys do i will make a follow-up video thanks guys and also get yourself some LaCroix. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.